So you have a clear focus on design for customer repair. Uh, but what other strategies do you have? Do you, do you collect and remanufacture, for instance, or recycle? Are you engaged in those types of things? So I think like we, we selected also, so from the, from the different circular strategies, we selected the one where we could have really uh, a big impact. So, you know, in, we can decide how a device is uh, put together, if you want, no? designed together to make sure that this repairability is, uh, is easy. Um, when you get to other strategies, so for instance, of course, we, um, you know, we want users to keep their devices as long as possible. You know? So we also do a lot of work through our brand and marketing to create that kind of attachment as well, uh, so, so that customers keep it, uh, keep it longer, which is very important for us. When it gets to, for instance, design for recycling, well, we are not there yet, I would say. You know, in the end, a smartphone is a smartphone, and a smartphone has like a bunch of materials put together, which may be more or less glued. You know, you know, like that's that's the level of influence that we can have. You know, we can like the batteries, exactly. Yeah. But still, and this is also related to your previous question, we still have to deal with recycling infrastructure mm -hmm. that is, you know, from from the linear economy yeah. as well. Yeah. And there is, there is um, I'll, I'll give you an example, just to be very clear. When we, we did our recyclability study, you probably know, so we, we, we made a, a study to understand the materials that are in this phone, how they would behave in current recycling systems. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we have done, and we, we have seen is, for example, the screen, the display. The back of the display is made of magnesium. Mm -hmm. You may say maybe magnesium is not the most interesting uh, material, but it's it illustrates very well uh, uh, the point for, for recycling. So what we showed through the recyclability study is that if you are able to dismantle this phone before it gets into recycling streams, and you can collect all these screens on one side, and then you send this to uh, light metal refining, uh, then you can get a lot of this magnesium back. Mm. So we go from, if we would just send this phone for normal recycle, let's say, mm. This would get more or less melted, oh, shredded, and, and oh, shredded. Yeah, yeah. magnesium would be completely lost. Yeah. Um, if you are able to dismantle it, mm -hmm. uh, you get 80% of this magnesium back. And dismantle it quickly and easily. And that's the point. That's the problem. You know, like the problem today is that there is not value enough to, you know, to have somebody that, even if it's this easy to dismantle, as I've shown, mm -hmm. when you have millions and millions uh, of devices to process as a recycler, yeah. These three seconds that took me to open may be a little bit too much already. Yeah. And, and that's why the recycling uh, methodologies that we have now are based on yeah, our, you know, volumes and, and very much focused on certain materials mm -hmm. that, uh, that make that return on investment mm -hmm. uh, to be true. So, so um, when the, just coming on to the materials side of things for a second, and, and I remember many years ago, you done work on looking at conflict materials mm -hmm. as well. So that was one of the founding things in the business, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. So Fairphone, before 2013, Fairphone was a, an awareness campaign, more or less, a very special and hands-on awareness campaign. So we, uh, we were showing through mobile phones as well, not our mobile phone at that time, but through mobile phones, mm -hmm. where these conflict minerals were. So mm -hmm. tantalum in that uh, famous yellow capacitor, you know, like tin to extend. Uh, gold and making people understand how uh, well stuff that we bought every day, right? Like with our euros in our pocket, with our boats, um, was also um, yeah fueling uh, conflicts uh, mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. um, not fueling, but you know, like the yeah, the, yeah. the economic gains from from trading from these yeah. materials were put yeah. in in into perpetuating uh, certain conflicts. Mm. So that was really the beginning, and, and we've done a lot of work on that still. So we, mm. we have today, with Surfon2, we have four uh, traceable supply chains all the way to the mine, yeah. and we, work with, we also work with mines that are in uh, high-risk areas, mm. so we don't want to, uh, let's say, escape the problem, but we want to try so to tackle it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we, we work with different organizations to improve the conditions of, of those mines. Mm. Of course, the, the starting point is that they are out of conflict, so that's yes. a point. Yep. But once they are out of conflict, we, we work in gaining that stability that uh, will lead them to be much more than conflict-free. Conflict-free is only the beginning. Uh, it's only yeah, assuring that people can work 
freely and they don't have to uh, worry that the warlord will ask yeah. some illegal uh, yeah. uh, fee. And then after that, then we can work towards a more kind of fair trade uh, yeah. kind of schemes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this, this isn't just altruistic, ethical and moral things, although I, I know there is a, you know, the word fair is in the name of your, your, your company and your products. There's also coming up in Europe good business sense about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's always been the case that it's good business sense. And there we see a number of different drivers. But one of them, as we know, new regulations coming in in Europe in 2021, January 2021, where some of the materials you mentioned, you mentioned gold, tantalum, tungsten, tin. These are four materials which will have to be shown to be clean, if I can use yeah. that expression, that they're not uh, coming from um, uh, mines and, and sources that are in okay. conflict and people yeah. suffering. So I think, I think this is, you're shown the way way before mm -hmm. anyone else was looking at it. And, and well done to you, because I think this is going to become mainstream and I think people will be coming to you and asking you, how do we do this? Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and, and that's great. Uh, and, and we very much welcome the, the new legislation in the, in the EU. Uh, we would have liked more ambition into it, of course, because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in the end, uh, yeah, you know, like there will be more work with refiners, etc. But we also always advocate a little bit for doing a more proactive work, you know, really using your power as a business, mm -hmm. the, 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 the power that, that the economy gives you as a business within, uh, within this uh, system um, to be more regenerative, if mm -hmm. you want. You know, like yeah. not, not only try to be risk avoiding, but uh, get into the depth of it and use like your own operations, yeah. not as a, and not try to avoid risk in your operations, but use your operations to, to do more good in yeah. a way. Right? Yeah, because yeah. 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 it's too easy to say, oh, well, these are blacklist countries. We're not exactly. going to buy from them. So you are probably And that's solved. what we want to avoid. And you've yeah. not solved any yeah. problem. And that's not fair. <laughs> so it's not fair to the people that are making and the, their living And this there. is a fair phone. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're good there. Great. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much.